When I was born in the early 1980s, America was about 80% white. It was a little more than 80% white and a little less than 80% non-Hispanic white. And just in my relatively short life, it's um, changed to, you know, just over 70% white and just over 60% non-Hispanic white. And um, that's a big change. And I haven't approved of, you know, all of those changes. And it's, it's, um, you know, had a lot of consequences that I don't approve of. You know, when I go to a city that's 80% white, it's usually a pretty nice city. But when I go to a city that's 60% white, it's usually not a pretty nice city. So that's a big difference. And you can observe it yourself, you know, and just look at the demographics of the cities around you. Um, but substantially the same is true of countries. And, you know, besides that change, we're slated to become a minority in this country if present trends continue within about 25 to 27 years, something like that. So once that happens, you know, according to democratic principles, we will be subject to a hostile coalition of these majority minorities, these um, hostile minority ethnic blocks, these hostile alien minority ethnic blocks arrayed around us and united by an anti-white ideology which casts whites as historical oppressors and everyone else as victims entitled to our supposedly ill-gotten wealth and property. So uh, it's a very troubling development, very troubling trend, um, and there are plenty of good reasons to worry about it and plenty of good reasons to object to it. But whenever you raise these concerns, you know, you'll invariably get somebody saying something like, um, why are you worried about becoming a minority? You saying minorities aren't treated well in this country? Just treat minorities better. And um, this is a really malicious and dishonest critique because, you know, how we treat minorities and how minorities treat us are really two separate questions. Like, we're talking about completely different groups of people. And we're talking about completely different scenarios. And we're talking about... Um, you know, a country on the one hand that represents a traditional white majority and um, is governed according to our sensibilities and how that country treats minorities is going to be totally different from, you know, a country that uh, has a majority of newcomer, you know, hostile former minority, uh, you know, majority minority coalition united by this anti-white ideology. And, uh, you know, arraying themselves around the white center and attacking the white center is a pretty obvious shelling point for these people. It's a pretty obvious strategy that they can agree on, whatever their other differences. And, and those differences are vast, but it's something that they can agree on and something that they can rally around. Um, but you're talking about two completely different sets of people on the one hand, you know, how a white majority treats minorities and how a minority majority minority coalition treats whites that's two completely different questions you know from uh the standpoint of two completely different sets of people so it's really not an equivalent statement you know it's like saying uh you know at least we still have the constitution and it's like well you know once we're we've been replaced as the demographic majority by these you know hostile minorities who don't have our traditions who don't have our culture who don't have our values you know, that constitution is really going to be a very different thing. And so um, it's not necessarily going to offer the protection that uh, it did in the past. So, you know, it's really kind of pretty cold comfort. And the same thing with, uh, you know, the question of how we treat minorities versus how minorities treat us. Very different countries, two very different countries, two very different scenarios, two very different sets of people. So it's two very different questions. Um, and there's not an obvious relationship between those things. You know, the way we've treated minorities has only ever improved. At one point, they were officially discriminated against. And um, then we kind of moved pretty rapidly to, um, you know, a uh, principle of equal rights and uh, individualism, universalism. And from there, pretty rapidly moved on to, you know, special privileges and protections and benefits for minorities. Uh, and so the, the treatment of minorities has only ever improved, but their treatment of us, you know, hasn't. They've actually gotten emboldened. And, um, you know, whereas oppressed minorities may have been very respectful and deferential, at least superficially, 
you know, the, uh, you know, liberated minorities have been maybe less respectful and a lot less deferential and more entitled and demanding. And, um, you know, the privileged minorities, the uh, protected minorities even more so. And so um, sovereign minorities, that's the next step. You know, what's that going to bring? It doesn't seem like it's going to be a positive development for us, not for us. So, you know, um, there's no obvious connection between how we treat minorities and how they treat us. In fact, rewarding a sense of grievance and entitlement is likely only to cause it to grow. You know, if that sense of grievance and entitlement got them what they wanted in the past, they're only likely to engage in it again in the future. So, um, you know, they're not going to be appeased. They're not going to be mollified. They're not going to be bought off. It seems like, um, you know, this is a losing losing battle on that front. Um, and the other thing is, you know, minorities aren't mistreated in this country. If they were mistreated, they wouldn't be coming here to be minorities, and we wouldn't be in danger of becoming minorities ourselves. So, you know, just from a standpoint of demonstrated preferences, you know, minorities are not mistreated in this country. Um, you know, there are long-term historical minorities that uh, have been here for hundreds of years. They're not leaving this country in great numbers. And then there are, you know, relatively more recent arrivals, and they're not leaving in great numbers. You know, some of them may be illegal ones, might be, you know, because of the present political climate, but, um, you know, they're only continuing to come here. So they're obviously not mistreated in this country, you know, according to their own demonstrated preferences, as opposed to their stated preferences, which are maybe not necessarily 100% uh, congruent with their demonstrated preferences that mean a lot more, you know, actions speak louder than words. So, um, yeah, two totally different questions, two totally set different sets of people, two totally different countries. And, um, you know, empirically minorities are not mistreated in this country. So, um, you know, just a really dishonest criticism all around a really dishonest critique rather and not a legitimate criticism at all. And, um, you know, one final point I would make is that you usually hear this from blacks, and, and I don't know if they, they're coming up with this. I don't think they're coming up with this on their own. I think this is something they're being fed. But, um, you know, it's really kind of silly for them to support this process because even if it enhances a, you know, minority coalition, an anti-white minority coalition that can... Um, you know, temporarily wrest a larger stream of Gibbs out of the white majority or the, uh, you know, soon to be white plurality, then, um, you know, it's still not necessarily benefiting them in the long run. You know, blacks and uh, Hispanics don't really get along. Blacks and Asians don't really get along. So, um, you know, from that, their standpoint, replacing whites with Hispanics and Asians, uh, maybe not such a great move, you know, even if it might keep the uh, Gibbs flowing a little a little thicker, a little longer. Uh, it's still not a great move. So, um, you know, just just a really terrible critique, a really terrible point um, that doesn't have a lot of merit to it.